And I celebrate the fact that you can type self-control in just about anywhere and find better ways in your life to handle it. And what's really amazing is that even dogs would like some more self-control. Uh, my Aunt Kathy, who lives in northern Wisconsin, sent me this picture a couple weeks ago. What happened here? <laughs> yeah, porcupines and dogs or people or anything do not mix. So I'm sure Otis here was wishing that he had had a little bit more self-control. But there's so many things that want us to succeed because if we're looking for self-control with diet, exercise, relationships, um, how to get along with your fellow church co-workers, um, anything that's on your mind, you can enter that in and you can find videos and podcasts and posts and books uh, with people who want you to succeed in finding self-control. And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. But why is it so hard for us? Why do we have so much trouble with this? One of the best parts about working at a church is that people just love to bring us food. And I think they just come here and they say, these people are starving. <laughs> They're wasting away before our eyes and they need some nourishment. I know what will get them. A Costco-sized container of peanut M&Ms. They look at me and they say, Sean, he may not make it through the end of this week, let alone this sermon. You know what he could use? A box of donuts from Quick Trip. Fruits and vegetables, no way. Like, they're like, these people need leftover sheet cake. And Halloween is just glorious around here. It's incredible. Now, we have some people who are on our staff here at Hope Church who can just walk past these goodies as if they didn't even exist. You could say, did you see the cookies someone brought for us? And they would say, cookies? What cookies? I saw the bananas that were on the counter. Like, there are some people on our staff who can do this. And I am not one of them. <laughs> Actually, I would say I have about a 50-50 track record, they did ask me to preach a sermon on self-control, but recently a sign has appeared on some of the treats in our kitchen. And there's a running debate from the staff about the person responsible. <laughs> self-control is hard, right? And we all know the consequences when we lack it. You think about those moments where this treat is going to taste so good, but 15 minutes later, you're going to have a stomach ache. Or sending that harshly worded email or text is going to make me feel powerful and smart and right until I have to apologize for offending someone or just going too far. Now that new golf club or outfit or purchase is going to complete my collection until the credit card bill arrives the next month. You know, some cocktails would remedy this long day at work until the next morning when you have a headache and you've got to get out of bed and go to work again. We say to ourselves, when well, we work hard, you know, why can't we eat like kings and queens until the doctor tells us we have cardiovascular disease? Or something from my own personal life on Friday when I said to myself, it's just a little bit of time outside. I don't need to have any sunscreen. <laughs> until my wife said, why do you look like a lobster? And my body is radiating heat. <laughs> You've been there. You know a lack of self-control can make life challenging at best. It can destroy your life at the worst, but there's good news because Sophia, that's wisdom, has something to teach us about self-control and it's found in the book of Proverbs. This is Proverbs 16, verse 32. It says, better a patient person than a warrior 
one with self-control than one who takes the city. Now, in the ancient world... Thank you so much for checking out that last clip. My name is James, and I serve as the Digital Media Director at Hope Church. If you're interested in exploring more about this topic, just click the link down in the description. But we also wanted to take some time to personally invite you to come join us for our next live stream that's going to happen right here on YouTube starting at 8.25 a.m. Central. You'll be welcomed by our on-air host who will guide you through that day's experience. We have chat hosts ready to answer any questions that you might have. And we would just love for you to come be a part of our growing online community. But the real highlight is that we get a chance to meet you. So if you're interested in joining us, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get notified when we go live this Sunday. I cannot wait to hang out with you and we'll see you there.